Hey, welcome back to Bridal Sewing Techniques. And guys, you know I love to share my fabric sources with you. I found some filter fabric. And I'm gonna share my source with you. Are you someone who has experience with a mix of sewing, but is looking to get into the bridal sewing niche? This channel is for you. Hit subscribe to become a part of the community. Guys, so much has been happening and uh, we're working on still trying to find the best filter fabric out there um, that's available to the general public. I did have a company reach out to me. They are not sponsoring this video. I'm just passing this information on to you. The name of the company is Filty and there's their website, filty.com. They do have some FAQs on there, um, but they have a little pop-up when you go to their website that they have set up just this week specifically for uh, public consumers to be able to purchase this by the yard, and they have all the information on their website. I am not a filter scientist. I do know that the last video, the filter fabric that I was using in the video did not contain fiberglass. And I verified that with the makers of it, but still people were not hearing that for some reason. They had it bent in their mind that I was telling people to put fiberglass on their face. That is not true. I would not do that to you. Um, so anyways, this does not contain fiberglass either. So you can read all about it on their website and I'm going to walk you through the steps. There are more detailed sewing steps in my other tutorial that I put out a couple weeks ago and I'm going to put information up here about that um, so you can uh, follow the steps in more detail, but I'll walk you through making a mask out of this filthy fabric. Let's go. This time I just did little tucks and I made sure that they're pointing down. I know a lot of people were concerned about the extra seams uh, with the last video. So I just did tucks and then we're just going to have the seam going down the front of the mask. And that is going to be sealed with a low temp hot glue gun. Um, I did say that a couple times in the last video and for some reason that was like one of the most common questions uh, was what if air gets through the stitch holes seal it <laughs> with low temp hot glue I was also worried uh, with the last design that it would kind of collapse against uh, the wearer's face so this time I'm going to put some horsehair braid um, along this inner seam. This is just nylon. It's perfectly safe. Uh, I'm going to sew it along that seam just to give it a little bit more rigidity as it comes down around the mouth and the chin. Make it a little less collapsible. Curl this under. And I'm just going to sew it to the very edge. You can split the seam and sew it twice to make it completely flat. That would be just a little bit more time consuming. And this is already time consuming. So, just figured I would do it this way. I don't really want it to go all the way to the very tips of this because I think that would be annoying the skin here you can hear it it's nice and stiff easily cleaned that kind of thing nice so the steepest curve is worn under the chin, right? You can bind this edge in something if you want and then 
um, attach the elastic straps. One of the fabulous things about this filter fabric that uh, Filthy is telling me is that it is washable. Um, you can hand wash it in lukewarm water with an antibacterial hand soap and um, let it set out to dry uh, for a couple days. You know, we still don't know how long um, these current viruses are staying alive on fabric surfaces, but what you're probably going to want to do is make plenty of these and wash them when you're done with antibacterial soap and water, just a little soap, uh, and rotate them out over a series of days. Another design improvement is that I made the nose piece where it's the separate, it's a separate piece, the pincher, you can see the shadow of the wire that's in there. Um, details on this part is in the other video, but I did it where it's only sewn along this very edge, so there's no other stitching that's compromising the uh, rest of the mask. but it's still going to force the shape because of it being attached at this edge here. Sure, you stitch to the same line that's already there. You don't want to add additional punctures with your sewing. And I attach the elastic on the outside. I know that's not the prettiest place, but it's the least interruptive to the seal right here. You want as good of a seal as you can get. You want it to be as flush to your skin as you can get. So this elastic, it's going to depend on the width of it, um, how much you use. Also as your elastic ages, so if you're pulling elastic out of a drawer, um, it's going to stretch out a whole lot more than fresh elastic. So it's really important for you to just experiment with what you have on hand and what you're using. Um, I think on the last video I did 13 inch long pieces. And then I found for me, I do better with um, 13 on the top straps and 11 on the bottom straps. So that's what I did this time. All right, so remember, now you're gonna do a bead, just do a line of low temperature hot glue or whatever kind of seal you're comfortable with here along these stitch lines. Make sure you completely cover that and cover this, okay? I'm not showing that step here. That doesn't mean that it's not important. So make sure you do that. 
I know what you're looking for. You've been sewing for years, but you want to get into full-time bridal sewing. But there's something missing. You're missing the backroom secrets, the industry tips and tricks. The tools, the sources, the techniques that give you the speed and the accuracy that the industry demands. You have found it. 